Glory to God. You know, everybody, blessings to you. Everything in this life has different uh, reward systems for it. But um, there's a reward system for keeping your mind uh, stayed on King Jesus. So mentally, you'll, you'll do the, the work on your end to keep yourself um, in the spirit. You'll do the work on your end to keep yourself growing. So it's certain things that um, the spirit of the Lord not going to take it out of your jurisdiction to make that happen. He going to let you do it. So you'll have to pray in tongues. You do that. You'll have to praise God. You'll do that. And uh, ultimately, you'll, you'll be the one being a co-worker with the father. So. Never wave out your part of the agreement. Don't let yourself drift because um, the kingdom of God, it does suffer violence. But the violent take it by force. And what that really means is it suffer violence. That means that um, demons are able to ride over your head. That's what basically it is. When the Bible said that the kingdom of God suffered violence, it's saying that the kingdom of God suffer at the hands of evil spirits. Mean that evil spirits are able to win the battle, which is not good. But then it says the violent take it by force, which that is phenomenal in itself because if you think about it, it's saying that the violent gonna take it by force. So you actually has have to look at what Satan is doing and kind of take that mindset of war. Because Satan is intentional about destroying you. You have to be intentional about, intentional about destroying the works of the devil in your life because Satan is not guessing. Oh, should I put sickness on them? Oh, should I let them stay broke? Oh, should I let them have joy or peace? No, Satan is saying, I'm willfully going to steal the joy today. I'm willfully going to destroy the peace today. I'm willfully going to destroy the finances today. I'm willfully going to destroy the inspiration today. So you have to become even more vigilant and more aggressive about stirring those things up and keeping those things and increasing those things and intensifying those things. So all throughout your day, the Holy Spirit will give you doors to use divine weapons. Like I was thinking about my life today, like I didn't get here just because of an ideology that the father loves me or the father favors me or the father has good plans for me. I didn't get here off of that. <laughs> I, I got to where I am today because I took it by force and I separated myself from people that I knew that did not take it by force themselves. themselves. So I, I want you to see this as well. Uh, a lot of times, if you stay connected to people that didn't take it by force, you'll find yourself not taking it by force either, which is scary. Because what, what will start taking place is spiritually, you'll take on that mindset without even knowing. And you'll, you'll become a person where your life just goes according to whatever happens, happens. When really... You are an activator. Things weren't meant to happen that God wanted automatically. After this phase, meaning that sin has stepped in, you know, of course, Jesus died. But how the will of God happens is you are an activator. So until you realize that you are an activator, you will say, if the Lord want me to get healed, I'll get healed. The Lord want me to be rich, I'll be rich. If the Lord want me to be happy, I'll be happy. When really the Bible says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. That's Proverbs chapter three. So here's what's so glorious about that. It's telling you that happy is the man that findeth wisdom. So imagine people that say, if God wants me to be happy, I'll be happy. But really the happiness don't got nothing to do with God. <laughs> 
When I say it don't have nothing to do with God, I'm not saying that it's not coming from the Lord. I'm saying that it's not his part to create your happiness. Your part is to find wisdom. And the happiness is a harvest that the wisdom that you find brings. So if you say that I'm waiting for the Lord to make me happy, you're already in witchcraft because that's not the Lord's part. Your happiness is a discovery. Oh my gosh, and I'm teaching you some wisdom right here. You blessed to have me talking to you right now. <laughs> you blessed to have me talking to you right now. Your happiness, <laughs> your, 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 your happiness is a discovery. That's a wisdom door, right? <laughs> your happiness is a discovery. So you discover happiness and the, and the way that you discover it because you chose wisdom. Wisdom is the disconnection from what displeases God um, and foolishness is the, dis is the disconnection um, from what pleases God. If you take a note, write that down. Wisdom is the disconnection from what displeases God. And foolishness is the disconnection from what pleases God. The Lord has a pet peeve and it's called foolishness. Foolishness is words, is thoughts, is behavior, and it's also, is also company that the Lord did not schedule for your life. Did you know that there are certain words that God didn't schedule to come out of your lips? So when it comes out of your lips, you, you cast a spell on yourself. Because when it comes out of your lips, you have scheduled something that wasn't scheduled by the Father. What is really a curse? It is an event that occurs that wasn't a part of the divine schedule. It wasn't on the divine calendar. Now, I wanna say something shocking to you, right? that leprosy wasn't on the divine schedule. And uh, Naaman found something that wasn't on the divine schedule. Your decisions can create things that's not on God's schedule. Um, when we see in the word of God that Saul, which became Paul, is persecuting the church that wasn't on God's schedule. Now the Lord knocking him down was something that the Lord had to bring on the schedule because Saul was gonna keep on doing things that wasn't on God's schedule to people that were on God's schedule. Let me say this to you. If Saul was doing that to an average person in the earth, Jesus wasn't gonna knock him down. <laughs> the Lord only knocked him down because he was doing something that wasn't on King Jesus' schedule to people that were doing things on King Jesus' schedule. Do you know why the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm? Because the anointed is in God's schedule. The prophet is in God's schedule. So I said, don't touch them because if you touch them, then you're doing something that's not on God's schedule to people that's on God's schedule. If you walk down the street and slap a random person that have no anointing or no mantle, God is not going to do the same thing to you that, that uh, and, and, and say, say you go slap them and they're, they're living a homosexual life, right? They're not on God's schedule because homosexuality is not on God's schedule. <laughs> Lesbianism is not on God's schedule. Now you can live that type of life, right? But you're not on God's schedule. And so the Lord, he only responds with great passion to those that are on his schedule. Um, I can get into some political things, but, you know, there's a veil over a lot of people's eyes anyway, so there's no need for me to use that as a reference. But I can also go here. Um, the young prophet did not realize that the old prophet was not on God's schedule. So nothing that the old prophet could possibly say to him could be, should have been considered because the old prophet wasn't on the schedule. 
When people are not on the schedule, it don't matter if they're a prophet or not. If they're not on your schedule, um, anything that comes out of their mouth is illegal. So, so here is wisdom here. A lot of times um, you, you may be taught to think, okay, let me, let me respect this person because they're, they're, they're this or they're that. Or you may say, well, I'm going to listen to this person because they're a preacher. But if they're not a part of your schedule, there's no reward. This is why people could go to church all their life and never become a millionaire. Okay, if you got so much wisdom from church, why aren't you like healing every sick person that comes before you? Why aren't you a multi-million? Why haven't the blessing of the Lord overtaken your life? Because most times, even though people go to church, that isn't the divine schedule for their life. The Lord didn't create them to do that. They probably would go join a place and say, well, well, this is a man of God. The truth of the matter is the man could actually be a man of God. But if that's not the schedule that God has for you, even though that man is a man of God, it's, it's not a part of your schedule. So saints, to think of, if you think about this, um, the woman with the issue of blood through her faith, she made herself a part of King Jesus' schedule. That shows you that when you are in faith, when you're pleasing God, you can incorporate yourself in his schedule, even though you weren't on his schedule. That's why the Bible say that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Because even though the people that are last wasn't on the schedule, because of their faith, now they're on the schedule. And the people that were on the schedule are no longer on the schedule. So now they became last because they're not on the schedule. Or we can put it like this. They're on the schedule, but they're not prime time. <laughs> and, and, and saints, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm going to be prime time. You feel me? You, you know, we, we, we're not doing no back stuff. We're not doing no back end. <laughs> we're going to be prime time. We're going to be front end. And if we're not front end, we're not handling it. So you don't want the Lord to pitch you on the schedule, but not be relevant on the schedule. You want to be prime time. There's a way that you can be prime time. And what I love about the father is that nobody is set at prime time. Anybody can become prime time. Now, <laughs> The way that you become prime time is that you have to understand the law of faith. And the law of faith is this. I'm here to bring pleasure to God in my words, in my actions, in my thoughts, in my giving, in my uh, receptivity. Because saints, when Adam received from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it didn't bring any pleasure to the Lord. That type of receptivity brought God wrath. So that shows you that you can bring God uh, pleasure in your receptivity. That means that there are things that you are supposed to receive in 24 hours that pleasure God. If you receive information of how to surrender, that information is pleasure in God. That receptivity is pleasure in God. Surrender is different from submission. Because surrender is when you lay down your life. Submission is when you know what you're laying down your life to. <laughs> so when we deal with surrender, that's you dying to yourself. Submission is knowing the reason why you're dying to yourself. And who's a part of the equation for you dying to yourself. Many people die to their self and they resurrect their self because they have not submitted. Submission is where you understand the cause for why you're dying to yourself. And so Peter, he surrenders, but then he submits. So King Jesus is the only reason why his surrender remains. Hallelujah. Esther is in the kingdom where she surrenders herself. But King Ahasuerus is where her submission is. And so submission, it protects surrender. 
You're finding out something real powerful here. Submission. It is the protector and the guardian of your surrender. You can surrender, but without submission, your surrender will die after a time. And so saints, even my life, I remember when I surrendered to the Lord. Dr. Mike Murdoch was my submission because I joined, I joined his vision. I promoted him. I made his vision everything. I, I, I spoke nothing about Prophet Joshua Holmes. Everything was about Dr. Mike Murdoch. What does he like? What doesn't he do? What doesn't he don't like? And that was my submission. It protected my surrender. The same way King Jesus in the Bible, he surrenders to, 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 to the ministry that the Lord has given to him, but then he submits himself to John the Baptist baptizing him. Here's what's so powerful. When he submits, he says, let's do this, that righteousness may, may be fulfilled. But really, if you want to think about it in a divine text, he's saying, let's do this, that righteousness may be fulfilled. He's really saying, let's do this so that my surrender can be fulfilled because King Jesus has to do something that is, is really, it looks as if uh, John the Baptist is greater than him, even though John the Baptist is not. <laughs> so, so surrender is when, re when really God goes against your mentality and he reverses your mentality and he brings your mentality into a place uh, 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 where he, he paralyzes it. He paralyzes it. That's why in the process of surrender, you could easily abort that process because you can get into the mindset of saying, ain't nobody can tell me nothing. You can get into the mindset of saying, I already know. You can get into that mindset of, I don't need you to tell me that. But the truth of the matter is, that's what surrender is. Surrender is God checking up on the things that you think that you have already perfected. Surrender is the Lord confronting you in areas where you think that you have mastered. Surrender is where the Lord is starting to even re-examine things that you have offered up to him to see if you really offered it up to him. So Saints Lot's wife was in a time of surrender, but those angels came for her to submit herself. So when surrender is operating here, now submission is going to be the thing that decides whether the surrender is actually legit. You're learning something powerful right now. You're learning something real powerful right now. When we see the angels come on the scene or these two men, um, now the surrender is being tested through submission. So this is what Lot's wife does. She looks back which is a revelation that the surrender is not real. And the only way that it is revealed that is not real is through submission. So saints, this is the reason why the Lord consumed her because she offered false surrender. That the submission was, was the exposure that the surrender was false. So people of God, here's what I want you to see, sons and daughters. That whenever you say, I surrender, oh, I surrender, oh, that's why he brings a prophet to you. Because you say that you surrender all. So now submission is going to expose to you how much you have surrendered. And so Elisha when he surrendered all to the Lord, now he has to submit himself to Elijah. So now he is doing the things that is revealing that his surrender was real. He's sowing seed into Elijah. He is serving Elijah. He's protecting Elijah. He is observing and paying attention to whatever Elijah teaches. He is uh, respectful towards Elijah. He makes sure that his words are never demeaning, disrespectful, or challenging. You'll never see Elisha saying, you know, um, Elijah, you know, sometimes we make mistakes as men of God. And, you know, Elijah, he's a human. And shut your dumb behind up. <laughs> Ain't no human, you know, did no nine hour broadcast straight. 
You go call, you go you go you go pick up you go pick up a human. Go go pick up a human that didn't go to the restroom for nine straight hours. Go pick them up. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me. <laughs> And and, and, and 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 you wasn't going to find Elisha saying, you know, uh, and didn't drink no water, right, daughter? And, and didn't cough one time. Didn't sneeze. <laughs> didn't cough. Didn't sneeze. <laughs> didn't... <laughs> <laughs> didn't 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 did cry, didn't weep, huh? Didn't fall asleep. <laughs> Some of y'all, if you was on the line, you would fell asleep on yourself, Tulsa. Yes, Lord, Hallelujah. Some of y'all fall asleep while you praying, Tulsa. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Wake your, imagine that, <laughs> man, people always want to fall asleep when they pray. Why you ain't fall asleep when you was having sex with Leroy? <laughs> Dog on it. Huh? You going to fall asleep on God, but you ain't fall asleep on the God of this age? And saints, imagine my voice still here, man. You imagine talking for nine hours, my voice still here. Now, saints, you find out something powerful here. Is that surrender is tested by submission. Now, submission, it has mysteries in there because you see the word mission. So <laughs> when we deal, <laughs> when we deal with the, um, I saw that the Lord was going to overtake the judges and, 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 and there's righteous leaders that the Lord is pitting within the Senate. There's righteous leaders that the Lord is pitting within uh, the courts. Um, I want to encourage some of you all to know that America, though there is many wickedness going on here, the Mer America is the apple of God's eye. And um, I'm a raw prophet. So, you know, like I'm the, the spirit of God has spoken to me about a lot of raw things. And, you know, you know, um, so so, you know, if I'm telling you this, you know, it's legit. You know, America is the apple of God's eye. So it's not over by any stretch of time. And I want some of you all to get out of the mindset of the mark of the beast because it's not time yet. I want to prophesy something powerful to you and um, it's real rare, but I'm going to prophesy this to you. The vaccines that's coming out right now is not the mark of the beast. Is not the mark of the beast. Remember what I'm telling you here. I'm giving you the word of the Lord here. The, the vaccines that's coming out right now is not the mark of the beast, but I would advise you um, not to take it just like I advise you not to take flu shots because I don't take flu shots. Zendaya doesn't take flu shots. Uh, Zendaya doesn't have any injections inside of her and that's why she's so genius. Mind you, some of you parents on here, that's not to uh, slap you in the face. If your children have taken vaccines, the Lord is not gonna send you to hell. Sometimes you, you, you only operate by the knowledge that you have. Remember, I'm a genius. You understand? I'm a prophet of God. I'm an apostle. I'm a king. So the Lord give me the up and up on things faster than most people. So now that you're hearing me say this, don't beat up on yourself and say, I gave my children vaccines. No, no, no. You, you didn't do nothing wrong. You know why you didn't do nothing wrong? Because it wasn't according to your, your knowledge is how... The spirit of God deals with you according to decision making. And so when we deal with those aspects, never condemn yourself off of things that you hear me saying. I'm your example. And so um, <laughs> some of y'all, blessed be God, I can read your mind. You be telling some man, well, I need to have another baby so I can get this thing right. <laughs> Let me tell you something, player. 
Prophet Joshua Holmes is your baby, man. So just don't give me no vaccines. Don't give me no vaccines of hatred. Don't give me no vaccines of uh, disloyalty and disrespect. Don't give me no vaccines of disconnection. So so just leave that alone. Don't say, I need to have me another baby so I can get this correct. Shut your behind up, man. <laughs> Saints, you want the Lord to have your life the way that he wants. Like, for instance, at this times, you know, you think about it, you know. I actually got the power of it. I can do what I want. Lord, one time the Lord told me, when I say I can do what I want, I don't mean, I don't mean nothing foolish. But I have that type of relationship with the Father, where the Father be like, if you want to do it, come on, let's do it. <laughs> that's, how he, that's how he do me. Because I'm the type of person that say, Lord, I will not do anything unless you're pleased. That's how I, that's how I operate. I've always operated like that. Even as a little uh, baby boy, when I was a little boy, I used to pray and ask the Lord to help me to respect my mother. Help me to, uh, I used to pray as a little child. I was like five years old praying, Father, I'm asking you for wisdom and power to be a good boy. Oh, that's how I used to pray. At the age of five, I was telling the Lord, how you doing today? When I woke up throughout the day, I would tell the Lord, how you doing? I'm just checking on you to see if you're okay. That's how, that's how the Lord took me over. And so, uh, one time I was joking around. I said, Lord, I'm about to have 50 children. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to have 50 children. You know, I'm about to have 20 children. Lord said, what's stopping you? <laughs> the Lord told me. The Lord said, what's stopping you? I said, she. You, you don't want to tell me that, Jesus. You don't want to tell me that, Jesus, because I'm a bad man. You don't want to tell me that. You don't want to tell me that. You don't want to play with me. Don't play <laughs> Don't play with me, cause I, 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 I bust her, I bust her, you know what I'm saying? Don't play with me, don't play with me, don't play with me. Watch it now, watch it now, Jesus, watch it now. <laughs> and, and the Lord get fun, the Lord get fun when you are not, the Lord get fun when he can talk to you, you see what I'm saying? He go say that to the average person, they talk, I bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> he on me. <laughs> he on me. <laughs> He owned me. He owned me. The, the, the. <sighs> Since you, you know how many homos. Never mind. I ain't, I ain't gonna play with it. I ain't gonna play it. You know how many homosexuals wish that. Saints, they're homosexuals that think that Jesus would be their man. They, Oh, Jesus, you know, he fine. You know, he fine. He fine all the time. He fine all the time. And all you, all you cockroaches that was pitting up what you was eating on the line yesterday. Let me tell you something. We going to sumo wrestler kick you in the back. <laughs> we, 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 we going to sumo. <laughs> We're going to drop you in the, we're going to drop, kick you in the back. <laughs> other times, I mean, I feel eating some pig feet and all of that. I got the greens on the stove. We about to drop, kick you in the throat. Huh? <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? I got some, um, I got some, uh, blessed be the Lord. I got me some, I got me some greens on the pot right now. So saints, we find out something powerful here. That submission is the mission for your surrender. So your surrender will die off without the submission because the submission is going to be the mission for why you need to operate in the surrender. If there's no mission, there's no reason for the surrender. If you think about it, why am I surrendering myself if there's no reason for me to surrender myself? So the submission is the Lord giving you the mission of why you're supposed to surrender. So saints, it's very important that you submit yourself to the mission of why God told you to surrender. Like saints, let me tell you, let me tell you some stuff that happened to me. 
when people connect to me, and I can just be raw and explanatory concerning this because I know how my anointing works. If you really connect with me, right, there's several things that's going to happen. The spirit going to start talking to you about stuff that I, I, I won't even voice to you. Like, um, when you, if you, this is what happens when you submit to Prophet Joshua Holmes. Like, you become extremely consumed by my videos. You'll listen to my teachings. Your mind will become genius over time because if you listen to a genius, you're going to unlock your own. So, uh, you're going to become extremely consumed with my videos because this is my major realm of impartation. My anointing is to not write books. Um, my though, though I am a writer and though I have wrote books, that's not my major release. In 2015, uh, when I heard about people doing stuff on social media, I thought it was corny. Um, at first, I thought it was kind of corny. I was like, you know what I'm saying? Because they weren't talking about nothing. Like I would see like bishops and preachers and prophets and people and they would get on and they'd be like, you know, da, da, da. They weren't talking about nothing. So I started deeming it corny. I said, I'll never do this. I said, I will never do this as long as I live. And... Because, because, and his, and so I want to say this to you as well as a form of wisdom, that sometimes you can see people doing things wrongly, and it can turn you off. And God created you to do it. You see what I'm saying? So, um, you have to be cautious of that too. Like um, somebody can give you a story that's bad about a prophet and you say, oh, I'll never want to be a prophet then. Well, 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 no, 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 no. Don't let what they had happened to them or the corniness of what they're telling you define what, what God has for you. So when I, when I saw that, I, I, I did see a lot of, um, uh, um, people that I respected. I felt like they was kind of shallow. I, I kind of felt like, Hey man, what you doing on here, man? What you doing on here, man? You, 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 you should have got on here. If you, if you, you won't go come through with the popcorn. Don't, don't, don't give me no, uh, you know, don't, don't give me no, uh, no canned goods. You know what I'm saying? No, no. So I said, I'll never do that. So then the word of the Lord came to me towards the fall going into my, I think it was going into my birthday. And the word of the Lord came to me. He said, we going to go on Periscope. And I got on Periscope. I did obey. Bye, bye, bye. I did it, did it, did it. And I taught her hair and I, I developed like a fan base and stuff like that. Then the Lord told me, you going on faith. Then, then I thought Facebook was corny. I thought Facebook was extremely corny. The crazy thing about it, I still think Facebook is for, corny. <laughs> but um, the, Lord, the, the Lord told me, he said, now you're going to go on Facebook. And I was shocked. Because in, in my mindset, I was like, Facebook, ew. you know. I think at one time I thought that Facebook was like for for like people that was 90,000 years old. So then I got on Facebook and when I got on Facebook, I tore Facebook up. Right. So. Um, I remember one time. I got on Facebook and uh, when I started that, that's when that's when I really started getting attacked, attacked, attacked. I think, uh, no, no, it wasn't. So I started getting attacked. Well, I got some attacks on Periscope firstly. I remember when I first started getting attacks. <laughs> and, and and then when I got on Facebook, then I really got attacked. Then the Lord started telling me the differentiating factor is that uh, that Facebook is really the world, 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 world. You're the world, 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 world. And, um, and, and, um, uh, Periscope is like your army, your army, your army, your army, your army. So I I always knew that. So uh, there was sometimes I'll go on Facebook to throw out the bait because I have a, a word. Um, so I want you to catch this. Uh, when I was on Facebook and I started going viral on Facebook, um, now, surrender had a submission. 
Remember why I said when you surrender to the Lord, there's a mission. You see what I'm saying? So all these different avenues of instructions is to validify the surrender. If you don't stick to the mission, you can't say you surrendered. So saints, I want you to catch this. A lot of times Satan hear you say, I surrender all. But then Satan also um, would, would uh, uh, Satan will also get interruption to your submission, your mission. So Satan actually knows that if Satan could get to your mission, that Satan can stop your surrender. So this is all Satan has been doing. Adam was surrendered to the Lord. Adam, the woman was surrendered to the Lord. But then Satan, the serpent, gave her another mission. Once she um, operated in submission to another mission, now the surrender was finished away with. And this all Satan has been doing for years is getting people to leave the mission. Now their surrender cannot work. The only way your submission, your surrender can work is if submission can take root. So watch, watch what Apostle James said. Submit yourself unto God. Why? Because if you submit yourself unto God, that means that you're surrendered. And the only way you can submit yourself is with a mission. Resist the devil, he shall flee from you. So really, even the devil is challenging your submission and not your surrender. <laughs> you're learning something powerful here. Because Satan knows that if I get your submission, your surrender going to die with it. Because the only way that your, sum, your surrender could actually work is if I take away your submission. So saints, this is what has been happening for years and ages. That all Satan does is get people off of the mission that God has given to them. Your mission never changes. You change, but your mission never changes. You'll just go around the mountain and have to play church and play fake and play. Saints, the whole, uh, what we call the body of Christ is full of people that keep on going around circles like the children of Israel. They never complete their mission. If you go and talk to them, they'll tell you, the Lord promised me this. Uh, and they'll tell you, you know, I, I was called and I had a visitation from God when I was 17. And, and, you know, I saw two angels and they had fried chicken in their hand and I was hungry. And I said, can I have one of that drumsticks? And he gave me a thigh. I said, I don't want no thigh. I like the breast. <laughs> and, and when I went to get the breast, he slapped my hand. And when I slapped my hand, I received healing power. I started healing the sick. Oh, all that healing the sick and doing all of that stuff right there. But I said, give me the Popeyes. I want the Popeyes. He, he said, no, this KFC. I said, well, what you came from KFC for? I said, I want to, I want some breasts. You're going to give me a thigh. That's a lie. I want it. I want me some, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, and, and then the angel flew away. And when he flew away, I, I don't know. I saw little Yachty. When I saw little Yachty, I said, dad. This a demon. This a, this ain't the Lord. What done happened? And the angel came up and it's a, the, the banging. The banging and the banging. And I was like, what is the banging? Who is the banging? This is, then I realized, oh, the banging, because that's what they be doing. The men's up there be wearing dresses because they with the banging. Now, saints, I want you to see this is that this is why when um, when we see Mary Magdalene, she surrendered all to the Lord. Now she is submitting herself to King Jesus because her surrender needs submission for it to be protected. So saints, you're finding out something real powerful here that submission is what the devil is after. This is why Gehazi is surrendered to the Lord, but now his submission is being challenged. The enemy goes after his submission and says, don't do what Elisha did. Go and find name and get the money from his hands, get the provision from his hands and everything. And so now 
what takes place. His surrender dies. He gets leprosy because leprosy is a flesh condition. And the flesh is a place where you don't surrender. Watch this. So he gets a disease that is connected to the area where no surrender happens. How did the surrender die off? Because Satan got to interfere with his submission to Elisha. It shows you a lot of things, correct? So Miriam has surrendered all to the Lord. Um, she surrendered all to the Lord, but then demons start talking to her about Moses. Why are they talking to her about Moses' bad things? Because this is the area of her submission. If they can get her to stop her submission, they can get her to stop her surrender. And now she's in the flesh. So God strikes her with leprosy, which attacks the flesh. Because this is the area in which she has chosen to function. So that answer a lot of things. So you understand that submission is the protection of surrender. That's why I tell you all to listen to me. I tell you not to have five voices. If you're going to lock into Prophet Joshua Holm, lock into me. If you're going to listen to me and, and listen to somebody else, I know that you're not of me. <laughs> because my spirit, my spirit will tell you how to flow with me. So, um, um, that's, that's, that's why I teach you. So your seed into prophet Joshua Holmes. So into prophet Joshua Holmes, listen to prophet Joshua Holmes videos, follow me closely. And saints, I'm going to tell you something about when you lock in to your prophet, you will love him. He'll become your husband to you. You know, you won't be able to help it. The spirit of God will just drive you into that. And, and he'll become your spiritual father. You'll, you'll become his son. You'll become his daughter. They, you, you won't be able to help it because these characteristics, they create your loyalty. If you see your prophet, because that's what the woman at Zarephat did. The woman at Zarephat saw Elijah as her husband. Remember, she didn't have a husband. Um, um, she saw him as her husband. So it created a level of pleasure that she was going to give to him. The, the secret behind the Shunammite woman is that she actually saw Elijah as her husband. That's why she was she was trying to take care of him at the uttermost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I done had some jokes in my head, but I won't I won't voice none of those jokes at all. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. And and, and the Shunammite woman, um the Shunammite woman <laughs> She she had such a genuine love for Elisha that she was going to do anything that <laughs> that he needed uh, to be done. And, and the mindset, it pleased the Lord. It pleased the Lord. <laughs> who, who, who just ran past? Who? What? How did a gopher? How did a gopher just run across the screen just like that? There was a gopher that just ran across the screen. That, that'd be the problem. See, I'm th I thank God that he didn't give me a building. Like, like you know, them building because stuff be popping off, be frustrating you. Like people don't know how to control their children. And children just ran across while you preaching. You up there laying hands. They, they up there listening to Baby Shark right there on the side. Baby Shark, dee, 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 dee. Turn, turn, turn them off. Turn them off. I don't care if it's not my child. Get the big head boy up. Get him up. Get, get him up. He shouldn't have came across it. <laughs> he said, walked over. He's going to lick right back. No, no, no. Uh, Francine, uh, daughter, and um, I got your seed right here. You sold via the mail. You sold that. That I got your seed. Uh, uh, Cherry's King. Cherry's King was at my first meeting, you know, uh, the Ohio meeting. I got your seed too. Um, 
Let me say this. Uh, I know how to turn things around in the spirit. Um, because I did that the last couple of days, you know, I made some complaints towards you. I told you all, but I know how to turn things around in the spirit, which I have. Now, sometimes, sometimes the Lord may take another route. And when it take another route, you'll, you'll, you'll just adapt to that route. But I know how to turn things around in the spirit. And I really want to encourage some of you all to not settle for what Satan just presents to you to really become vigilant and fight the good fight of faith and get things into the will of God. Um, those of you all um, that have children, if you have children, you find your children start acting up, start decreeing st stuff over them. Just penetrate the atmosphere because you can get their soul out of the altar of Satan. You just got to know how to do it. Um, let me just give you an example. Say you got a son or a daughter, right? And you see like the satanic uh, flow operating in them. Uh, this is, this is, this is what you could do when, when you, you, you speak things over them while they're sleeping, speak things over them while they're sleeping. I don't want to stay to here too long. I know a lot of you all don't have children like that, or you may have children, whatever, but speak this, the, the decree over them while they're sleeping and also, um, retract back to any foolish words that you have called your children. If you have ever called your children stupid, foolish, um, if you ever called them names, if you ever said uh, you acting like so and so or, da, 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 or, or stuff like that, you got to go to the courts of heaven and unravel that. Because um, what Satan, the accuser, the brethren would do is say, um, Lord, even their father called them this, even their mother called them this. And so we have legal right to bring their words to pass. They spoke death. We can bring those words to path, path, uh, pass. So here's what you got to do. You you praise God because this is how you enter into the courts of heaven. So, Lord, I praise you. I give you glory. I praise you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Thank you for everything that you have done for me. I give you glory for all that you have done in my life. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I give you all the praise. I give you all the praise. I give you all the praise. Now you're entering into the courts of heaven. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you for life. I praise you for your goodness. I praise you for your mercy. I praise you for forgiving me. I praise you for protecting me. I praise you for feeding me. I praise you for giving me opportunities. I praise you for your blood. I praise you for your resurrection. I praise you for your spirit. And as you're talking, you're entering into the courts of heaven. Now you stand before the righteous judge. And you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you. Uh, before your course right now, and I, I decline, I delete, I cancel every word curse, every word of death that I've spoken over, and you name your child, dot, 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 and dot. And right now, Lord, I speak the blessing over my child. Father, my righteous judge, in your courts, the courts of heaven right now, I speak over my child that my child is blessed. I speak over my child and my child is free. I speak over my child and my child has wisdom, sound wisdom, that they are submissive, that they fear you, that they are taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of my child. Now, when you're doing that, and I'm talking to you all that got little children, um, those of you all that got grown up children, you could do that, but I'm not really talking to you. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those of y'all that got children under the age of 18. You, Lord, I offer up my child to you and I praise you that my child are delivered by the blood, are delivered by your grace. They are saved. They are set free. And I speak that my child will serve the Lord. I prophesy over my child that they will listen to the spirit. Now, I'm talking to those of you all that got children underneath your care. You know why I'm doing that? Because when children are not underneath your care, they still have their decision. They still have their will. So you can pray things over them and it, it can be effective, right? It can work. But uh, there is a text in the Bible where King Jesus was saying I come to bring a sword. I come to bring a sword against mother and father, uh, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law and father and stuff like that. 
And in in some cases, even when your child is a certain age, um, there may be some things that go on where the reversal of their will is is a is a problem because they 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 get introduced to a lot a lot a lot of decision making solo apart from you. You see, what I'm saying. So all things are possible with God, but. I'm mainly talking to those of you all that have children underneath your household, you know, because I'm, I'm dealing with wisdom here. So I'm not, I'm not going to just tell you information and then have you unwisely handle it. I'm, I'm showing you the bracket in which I'm releasing this word. For those of you all that got your children underneath your care, speak over them. You're not speaking over no 35 year old man, <laughs> no 35 year old woman. You ain't going over their bed and tossing in the name of Jesus. That, 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 that. No, because most likely they don't even stay with you. You see what I'm saying? I, I'm saying you speaking over somebody. I'm talking about somebody that stay with you. I'm talking about your little, your little child. You see what I'm saying? Now let, let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, but nevertheless, all things are possible. And I, be, I believe with you and I agree with you that your children will be saved. Those of you all, your grown up children, I agree with you that your, your children will be saved. And I touch and agree with you that they will come to the knowledge of the light and follow your same path and that they will be quickened to follow in the footsteps of their divine parents. I do pray that for you. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. So I, I, I cut you. And I just gave you a little, little, little anesthesia, gave you a little medicine, gave you a little pop a perk. I just gave you some perks. <laughs> so go ahead, pop it, pop, 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 pop the perks. Man, I'm on here longer than I wanted to be on here, man. But I'm on here because, of, you know, you know what I'm saying? The spirit of God, he want to say this to you anyway. Uh, a lot of times I, 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 I may set to do something, but then the spirit start flowing and we end there. But I want to be here. Correction of words. I want to be here, but I had set a schedule to do some, some, some business. Now, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says this. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Um, and the wealth of the sinners later for the just. The just. Now, I want you to see this here. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. The Lord is promising you wealth here. He's promising you that you're going to step into wealth. So anticipate the wealth of God is a part of the gospel. The gospel is that the Lord is going to give you a life that has the best provision, the best money flow, the best health, the, ble the best freedom, the best joy, the best peace, the best happiness, the best wisdom, the best protection. I want you to see this here in the text that is saying that a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Now saints, children's children is long finances. This, this magnum money, this is money that is extensive. This is provision that has a wide open heaven like this. So this a wide open heaven. So the Lord is promising you here that when you are a good man, that this is going to occur for you. So be in expectation of it and rejoice before the Lord because he has this in your pathway. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. So this is the Lord saying that I promise you that I'm going to bring extensive provision to you. This is extensive provision. This is the type of provision that your child is going to live their whole lifetime and the money is going to last over into the other child's life. Their children, that's long money. That is long money. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, uh, 12 verse 11. Look what it says. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. It says, he that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. Do you know that bread represents provision? It represents strength. It represents supplies. That's why I say, give us this day our daily bread. It said that you're going to be satisfied with supplies. 
you're going to be satisfied with provision and you're going to be satisfied with um, with uh, strength. Now, when we deal with strength, the Lord has a strength in provision, a strength in taking good care of you. So so when you meet the strength of God in your provision, understand that the spirit of the Lord is saying that I'm going to make you very untouchable in money, in provision, in finances, in supplies. I'm going to give unto you everything that's going to make you untouchable and it's going to defend you. And we know that the Bible says that money is a defense in Ecclesiastes. So money is a defense. So when we deal with the whole strength factor here, the Lord is saying that I'm going to make you strong in provisions. You're going to have financial strength. Lord, I receive financial strength from you. Lord, I receive the strength of your provisions. All today and all this week, I receive the manifestation of all of your provisions and all of your money cometh graces. I receive the strength of you taking good care of me. Now, look at this right here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11 says that he that tilleth his land. Now, for you to till the land, that means that you become an aggressive sower. You got to have mighty sowing hands to till your land. Now, saints, what is your land? Your land is your man of God. Your land is your man of God. So, saints, uh, when we deal with your land, your land is is your soul. Your land is your teacher. Your land is your prophet, the person teaching you, inspiring you, giving you wisdom, giving you understanding. And so the truth of the matter is, is that the spirit of God has hidden the strength of your money, the strength of your provision, the strength of your supplies in sowing into your land, your man of God, your prophet, your teacher. And so saints, this is why Abraham sold into Melchizedek because Melchizedek was his land. So that's why the Lord gave Abraham lands. He, his land unlocked his lands. So the hundredfold is really in your apostle, is in your prophet, is in your teacher of the word. That's where your hundredfold is. And so once you get aggressive about sowing into your teacher, that's why the hundredfold lifestyle overtake you, the blessing overtake you, because that's where it's really hidden. And so um, your man of God is a portal. Your prophet of God is a portal to the blessing of Abraham. The prophet's reward, all the stuff that the word of God said was going to come to pass according to your provision. It needs a land. It needs a soul. So saints, how was the children of Israel going to enter into their land flowing with milk and honey if they respected their land? which was Moses. Moses was the land that if they would sow and they would have worshiped Moses. See, Moses was a God. So that shows you that a God prophet, I can't talk for other prophets because most prophets don't even understand this. <laughs> uh, a God prophet, uh, they were supposed to worship him. So Moses was supposed to be receiving their worship. Meaning whatever Moses tell them to do, they do it. That's why even it was called something, the law of Moses. It didn't say it was the law of God. It said it was the law of Moses. So Moses made these laws underneath the inspiration of God. God had taken him over when God possessed you and take you over. Then what the laws that you make are righteous laws. Now let's go here. And so I want to go deep on here. I want to uh, step into a raw anointing right now. So I'm going to get real raw. So just stick with me and, and, and uh, you can humble yourself, dog on it. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. When it's talk about the satisfaction of bread, remember it said, give us this day our daily bread. So when we deal with, they're going to be satisfied with bread. This is wealth. This is riches. Because saints, God could give you your daily bread, but it doesn't mean that you're satisfied. Meaning that you are at a high bracket of this. It can mean that you're getting a supply. You got just enough. But when we deal with satisfaction, we're dealing with wealth and riches. So when he said that he that tilleth his land, he that become an aggressive sower into his man of God, into his apostle, his teacher, 
he shall step into wealth. He that learns aggressive sowing, violent sowing into his leader, into his prophet, shall be satisfied with wealth. Because when we deal with satisfied with bread, bread, like I said unto you, is um is provision, is prosperity, is abundance, is supplies. So when we deal with satisfaction, we're dealing with the wealth of supplies. We're dealing with the increase of supplies. Um, now, I also want to say this. All the people that you hear me uh, telling you that that uh, that um, that are experiencing all these miracles, these are people that worship me. Because that's how you unlock the prophet's reward. You can't unlock the prophet's reward until you worship the prophet. And I got to teach that to you because um, you find out what that prophet likes and you give it to them. You find out what that prophet uh, desires and you make that your objective. You find out what is the vision of that prophet and you help him push it. You find out what is the pet peeve of that prophet and you stay away from it. You find out what pleases that prophet and you do it more. You find out what that prophet gets inspired by and you become that. Um, some of you all um, have mastered what it meant to worship, 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 worship. Uh, worship is, is the law for wealth. Until you learn how to worship, you'll never have the wealth that God wants you to have. You have to learn how to worship. That worship means that you put someone else's preference above your own. So that's why sowing is worship because you could do things with the money, but you choose to pit the Lord's preference above that. Look at my son right there. Say, King, I got $250 bonus on my next pay. And son, you genius. You have overcome the gates of hell. You helped me on my page. You have that prophet Joshua Holmes one liners page. That's Makai that does that. And Makai is always sowing. Makai, what's your two last largest seeds that you sow? Could you remember them? He probably can't even remember it because he's always sowing. And Makai also listened to me. When I met Makai, Makai was not a sower like that, but he listened to me. And now he a master sower. Or if you can remember your two last seeds. Mind you, Makai was healed from, from skin disease. Makai was healed in my meetings. Uh, and I just breathe on Makai, a thousand and twenty one and six hundred and seventy nine dollars. See, these are living testimonies of people that they worship me. Makai worships me. You know what I'm saying? And as a result. He's walking in the prophet's reward. When you worship your prophet, you unlock the blessings of the father God. That's how it works. Um, that word worship has been tainted by Satan to make people believe that worship means that you leave the father out the equation and you start worshiping Satan in a man. No, the devil is a liar. Worship is a word that means that I will begin to celebrate, submit myself, obey, honor, and listen to God as a man. I detect God operating as a man and I'm going to submit myself. I'm going to do what it takes to make that uh, possible that God is pleased. And so that, that's, that's what happens. And um, if you notice in the text, it said, believe the Lord God and you'll be established. Believe his prophets, you'll, you'll prosper. Okay, think about this, people of God. Why would the Lord say to do the same thing to him, to the prophet? Because the prophet is him on the earth. And, and saints, I, the, 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 this, this actually um, is more seen in the prophet that has laid down everything for King Jesus. Some prophets have not done that. You see what I'm saying? Some prophets have not done that. They're into race. They're into carnality, they're into jealousy, they're into uh, 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 things. And so that scripture will become hard. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, the people that are assigned to them should worship them. <laughs> Ain't that crazy, right? But hey, 
The people that's assigned to them uh, should worship them. You see what I'm saying? Is it? Uh, if it's a donkey prophet, then it should have donkey followers. The donkey should, all of, all of that should go together. So, so um, when the donk when the donkey followers come over to a divine prophet, then they start um they start interfering with the flow. You see what I'm saying? Because they bring that donkey doctrine, <laughs> and, and they try to work it. In, in a in a realm that's that's higher than the prophet that they dealt with. You'll see people do that sometimes with me. Um you'll see people like they hop over, but they came over from a prophet, and so my realm is like is is out of this world. Like, you know, they they they, they try to mix what they had already known with what they know and then it it is like a brain freeze. Like, man, but this prophet had told me that like this, and yeah, but the nigga wasn't all that Ha! <laughs> the nigga wasn't praying like Prophet Joshua Holmes. The nigga don't do what I do. <laughs> so, so, so you 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 gotta understand. You gotta understand what you're working with. Uh, I was shocked. The Lord, I, there there was somebody dear to my heart. And um, I knew them as a prophet. I heard the Lord said something to me that shocked me today. I was in my shower. God talk to you the most when you're taking a shower because you don't like, you don't like uh, funky niggas. Uh, uh, I was taking a shower, you know what I'm saying? I was taking a shower. I love taking showers. I was in the... And while I was naked, he liked when you're naked too because that's how he made you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? God made you naked, you know, all these clothes. That's why, you know what I'm saying? You put on a thong, you feel an extra anointing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm playing around, man. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. That's just a little joke, man. <laughs> That's just a little joke. You got you to wake yourself up, man. Wake yourself up. And so... Uh, <laughs> So I was, I was taking, you know, I was taking a shower and the spirit of God had told me there was somebody dear to my heart and I had formerly knew him as a prophet. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not nobody that you know, you know what I'm saying? It's not nobody that you have seen me deal with before, but it was someone else, you know, it's just somebody, you know, sometimes you, you, you in deep thought, cause I know God give me all these revelations and the Lord speak to me and, and, you know, the type of, uh, dimension with the great God Jehovah I have. And so sometimes I do I do I do intercede for people because you know I I I I wish that all would be at their highest in their ministry. You see what I'm saying? But that's what I do because I, I I'm 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 a leader. Mentally like my mind my mind I'm 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 conscious of things. I know people drift away. I know people could uh, be, but here's what the Lord had told me, which was shocking to me. The Lord told me, he said, this one is no longer my prophet. Exact words. Not that this one is a false prophet. Not that this one is a, <laughs> not, not, not that this one is a, a false prophet. Um, he said, this one is no longer this was the exact words he said to me because I was kind of like interceding for the person. You know what I'm saying? Because I want everybody to reach their highest in ministry. And and I, I know people's potential. I know what God has invested in them. Um, he said, this one is no longer my prophet. Now, mind you, this is this is this is this. This, 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 there's a lot of prophets in America. I'm not, I'm not talking about nobody in Africa. I'm not talking about nobody in New Zealand. I ain't talking about nobody in, in, in Australia. He said, this one is no longer my prophet. And then the Lord began to explain to me, he said, son, can a man and a woman break up? And he says, son, what's the real reason? I said, yes, Lord. He said, what's the real reason why they break up? He said, son, it's only disagreement. He says, son, 
the only way me and them, my prophet will no longer be together is because they don't agree with me anymore. And I said, I get that. How can two walk together lest they be agreed? And guess, guess who preached that message? Prophet Amos. Think about that. It was Amos that preached that message. He said, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? It was a prophet that came with that word. Why did he say, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? Because he understood the law of prophet, the prophetic code. You agree with God. That's why I told you in my life, you never see me betray the Lord. I don't give a squat who scream, who shout, who got something to say about it. You'll never see me disagree with the Lord. It don't matter if, the, if, if, if mama or father, you'll never see me disagree with the Lord. And here's what I want you to see. When you disagree with the Lord, you get demoted. I heard the Lord said, this is no longer my prophet. And saints, do you know the first thing that I started thinking about? I started thinking about how many people are no longer the Lord's prophet. That's the first thing that I started meditating. I started saying, wow, the father is giving me a mystery here. That somebody can no longer be my prophet. And what's the reason behind that disagreement? People don't agree with the Lord. They get demoted. Remember, the same Lord that pitch you up can pitch you down. And why is he going to pitch you down? Because he don't like you? No. Is he pitting you down cause, because he think that you look like a cockroach? No. He pitched you down because you don't agree with him. Imagine, why would I have you on my board if you don't agree with my policy, my mindset, my strategy? Why would I have you on my board? Remember, a prophet is an office. You can get fired from an office if you don't meet the office requirements. And let me, let me say this to you. People can't fire you. When the Lord told me that this is no longer my prophet, he wasn't saying that people voted him out. <laughs> he wasn't telling me that people done talked about him and changed my mind about him. No, the Lord's saying this one don't talk with me he not seeking me. He not concerned about what I like. He just saying what he want to say. So, so, so no flesh and blood can't fire you from the office. The Lord said to me, he is no longer my prophet because I was mindful of the person. And obviously I was mindful of them because the Lord wanted to tell me that. The Lord wanted me to understand. So, if I pray for the person, it's going to shift now. Basically, I ain't going to pray for the person no more. <laughs> you say, well, prophet, why wouldn't you pray for them? If you know that, then the Lord. Because um, the Lord let me know that they, he not on their, he not on, they not on his mind. So why am I putting them on the Lord's mind and they're not on the Lord's mind? Saints. Also, I want to say this to you, that start to say this, Lord, let your will be done. Because what you want to realize is this, if it's not the will of God, by the way, I got the best cornbread in this world. <laughs> I just want to say something. Let me just say something. Let me just say something. Uh, <laughs> I just want to flip off because that was a kind of grievous topic. I don't want to talk about that because I ain't, I ain't fall off, so I ain't worried about it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't worried about it. That's, that's every man, every man for himself. Every man got his decision. Uh, I got the best cornbread in this world. 
Now, saints, when you taste my cornbread, <laughs> when you taste my cornbread, what you got to understand is that um, it's actually miracle bread. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you taste it, 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 it's just, it's just, it's just that. You see what I'm saying? I have the best corn. Now, saints, if you ever went to a cookout or ate with anybody or, or at a restaurant, I promise you that my cornbread is the best cornbread you ever tasted. I promise you somehow, some way, I, got, I have to figure out a way. But then, uh, Lord willing, the next time that he wants to meet with you face to face, I will have that cornbread for you to taste it. Now it, it, it's, go, it's going, but, but saints, I, I have an anointing. I have an anointing, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I have an anointing. Now, look at this here. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that. I just want I just I just wanted to tell you that. Now, saints, and, and, and let me just say this here. There's an anointing for cooking. And I, I I want some of you all to to get this in your head that you have more anointings that you actually know about right now inside of you. Do you know that? You have more anointings inside of you than you know about. You have more abilities inside of you than you know about. Um, you have more graces that you have yet to walk in. And that is the mystery of life. And that is the beauty of life. That why would you ever be depressed? Why would you ever throw in the towel? When there are sides of you that you have not even been acquainted with yet. Since you know all the stuff that I do in demonstration and ministry, those are stuff that I found out about. But when I was a little boy, I used to breathe on my dog. I used to, uh, you know, I used to swing my hand at my dog. Um, I used to do all those things. Um, yeah, so... So, so you have abilities that you don't know about yet. So a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Let's go to um, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. It says, a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. That means that when the wicked have mercy, it's still cruelty. Now, let me show you something that you never heard before. That even taking care of an uh, uh, animal, uh, um, even taking care of an animal is actually um, a path to blessing. If some of you are on here have dogs or birds or you have different type of animals, just know that you're doing that as unto the Lord. All right. Uh, so so did, I, I never saw this before, but the spirit of God uh, told me to talk, talk about it. You see what I'm saying? Um, now, if you got a pet, don't go get a pet to try to get no blessing. All right. <laughs> All right. But what I'm saying to you, if you have a pet, if you take care of your pet, there's a blessing. Remember what it says right here. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. Uh, so your beast is actually an animal. So when we deal with that aspect, we're dealing with the power of God that will flow in your direction simply because you have chosen to take care of the animal that you have. So spiritually, you must put yourself in submission to God in all areas because everything in your environment is a portal to blessing. If, 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 um, if you have animals, that's going to be a portal to blessing as well. So take care of the animal. If you have anything in your presence that is a part of your household, if you treat it with respect and honor, you will be blessed. You see what I'm saying? 
And so when we deal with the depths of the blessing, the Lord will give you many different uh, ways to tap into money coming, even through a beast. Oh, Jesus. Ah, yeah, yeah. If you remember, the mark of the beast is dealing with money because it's dealing with all type of stuff. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> now, mind you, <laughs> I want to say this. Let me say this to you. Those of you all that live with people that don't want pets, don't get pets. <laughs> don't. Get pets. Don't get pets. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you like I tell I is. Like if if your spouse don't want pets, don't get no pets. If uh, somebody that you're living with in the household don't want no pets, don't get no pets. Because um, you want to be a blessing to people in the environment that they stay with you. And if both of you are not in agreement with pets, don't get it. You see what I'm saying? If other people in your household are not in agreement with pets, don't get it at all costs. Don't get it because it's going to mess up the peacefulness and the joy that has been established with those in your house. See, I got to give you kingdom manners here. See, when you listen to somebody like Prophet Joshua Holmes, you're going to be a classy man. You're going to be a classy woman. You're going to have, you're going to have the right. <laughs> you're, going, you're, going, you're, going, you're going to have the right representative in your functionality. You're going to be an example. <laughs> you're going to be an example. And, and. <laughs> While, while, while you are an example, you are pleasing God because it said live, live peaceably with all people. And so when you're dealing with that aspect, you always want to respect the lives of those around you. If they are not in agreement, don't do it. Saints, seek peace and pursue it at all costs. When you are around people, you are around people. Um, make sure you meet their preference. Let me tell you something. If I've ever been around Dr. Mike Murdoch, right? Here's what I do. You find out if your cologne is correct. You see what I'm saying? Hey, I'm just saying the depths of honor. You find out what conversation is the person interested in. So if they like talking about hot dogs, you don't start talking about I'm vegan. You see what I'm saying? Because they like talking about hot dogs. So learn about hot dogs. Uh, you, you find out what is their interest? <laughs> what is their interest? So if they are not interested in, in volleyball, you don't start talking about, oh, you know, a volleyball player just came on the scene because that's not their interest. The more you become honorable, the more you become someone that is concerned about impressing people that matter. The more that you become honorable, you become impressive to people that are a part of your equation. So when you at your workplace, don't be talking about, oh, I don't care what nobody say about me. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the king. The Lord loves me. I don't care. I don't need no boss. I don't need God going to make a way for me. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that because the Lord will let you be hungry with your stupid self. <laughs> The Lord will let you have all type of di discrepancies with your dumb self. He'll let you be hungry, homeless. You're going to get kicked out of place and the Lord ain't even going to budge. He's going to turn his back on you because you're stupid. You understand? You, you supposed to want to please somebody. Saints, guess what? I care what you think about me. That's why you don't see me come on here looking like no sweat hog. <laughs> I, I, see, I'm freeing your mind. I'm freeing your mind. Don't I dress up uh, every time you see me? So I care about what you think about me. I don't give you no ugly, ugly. You know how many preachers be looking ugly? Ugly as I don't know what. Talk about. <laughs> up there, they, they, they spit so strong in the camera. The camera, the, you, you felt the spit come through your camera. Like, how the hell did I got spit on my eye? Could you just yell? 
you just yeah, I feel the spit right here. This this is a spit that I didn't have before. <laughs> the nigga just spit on me through the camera. <laughs> I, I know Soldier Boy said that he can kiss you through the phone, but blessed be God, you done spit through the phone, dog, on it. This spit wasn't there before I came on the scene. I was listen, you you spit on me for real. I ain't got no leak at the top of my roof. I ain't got no leak at the top of my roof. You spit on me for real, is it? Now, mind you, I'm not I'm not against being, you know what I'm saying? Some people are like, man, you know, ain't nobody ever spit on me before you been that spit on me. I, I, I receive, I receive, um, I receive, uh, I receive, I'm, I'm not a hater of uh, spit donations towards <laughs> spit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you, you want you want you say you want trying to sow you trying to sew, all right all right <laughs> you trying to sow you trying to sow huh you trying to sow what so 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 you can sow you can sow you can sow you can sow as long as long as you ain't now if if you drink a lot of coffee then we ain't we ain't having you we know you have you having nah we, you drink a lot of coffee we not trying to have no no I'm saying no no, no coffee. <laughs> that right that's just a joke, man. It's just that's just a joke, man. It's just a joke, man. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Please, please, no tongue emojis on here, please. But I'm about to slap some of y'all on your forehead. I'm not. I'm not. Please, no tongue emojis on there. None of this. I'm not. That. We don't want no tongue. Tongue emojis are banned off the line from this day forth. No tongue emojis if you. You know, we we might give you a pass. You might you might get a pass. You could put at least three tongue emojis before you get rebuked. <laughs> once you once you get to that, once you get to the third one, we not we not we not we not we not going to give you any more permission. So a permission slip, you get to about three tongues after after third tongues. No more tongues. Three more tongues. That's just a joke, man. It's just a joke. Look what it say right here in um Proverbs chapter Proverbs chapter twelve verse ten. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. So when you do have an animal in your presence, what you do for them is going to <laughs> is going to be a, a blessing. Now um, uh, let's go here in verse nine. All right. Proverbs chapter 12, verse nine says that he that is despised and has a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. He that is despised and has a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. Now, saints, honoring yourself means to invest in yourself but you lack provision. This, this go for people when you try to buy a big old Chanel purse and then you still ain't got enough money to... <laughs> this goes for those of you all that you try to go shop at the Gucci store and 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 you, you, done, you done bought something from the Gucci store and now you praying for a financial miracle. This... When it say honor yourself, that means that you became your own soul. You sowing into yourself. So saints, this this is something that goes in line with money coming from wealth. You don't want to be someone that keeps on investing in you. And the Lord is is, is bringing you into sowing. Because you, you're supposed to unlock a lifestyle where, where you're going to be in the equation. The Lord going to take care of you and bless you and have you looking real good. Saints, there's not been anybody that I have met in my life that ever got close to me, close to me, that I didn't take care of them. I, I, I'm the best person to ever take care of anybody. I know how to take care of people. I know how to love people. Um, but spiritually, um, if you look in the aspect of God, that's how God operates. The Lord knows how to take care of you, but he's saying, I want you to become selfless first. I want you to lose yourself and let me do it. Don't try to take care of you before. 
Like, I know that you eat that whole pizza all by yourself. <laughs> you know, you're not no woman if you ain't buy no pizza all by yourself, Blaze God, and ate the whole shitang by yourself. Girl, what the, what the, girl, you, 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 you a monster on the low. <laughs> Well, but but let me tell you something. All them all them abilities that you got right there, it might it might work out for you because you. If <laughs> you can eat that whole pizza by yourself now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Shoot, shoot, shoot. I done saw about three pizzas just flew in front of my face just now. I just saw a vision. I just saw three pizzas just flew in front of my face. Just, just, I tried to catch it. I tried to catch it. I just, just saw some pizzas. I saw some pizzas just. I just saw some pizzas just. Just saw some pizzas just came before me. Just, just saw some pizzas that came before me just like that. I saw some pizzas came before me. Some people work at the pizza place just so that they can get free food. Saints, how many of y'all know that if you ever work at Popeye's, all you're going to be doing, you're going to get fat because you're going to be eating them chickens. <laughs> because blessed be God, they'll be up there. Shoot, you'll be up there talking some man. You'll be at McDonald's talking some man. I want two apple pies talking some And we ain't got it. We ain't got none. Nigga, you, nigga what? Okay, I'm, come on, come on. Come on, let's drive up. Let's drive up here. Wait, excuse me, you say you ain't got no apple pies in this McDonald's? You got apple, you got apple pie. Where my phone at? You got apple pie crumbs right there by the side of your mouth. I see apple pie crumbs. You ain't got none because you ate it. You, oh, you the one that you you ate it. If I come around here again and you eat the last apple pie, I'm gonna slap you. And it's, it's always it's it's saints. You notice that. Saints, you know it's right. This this is big old this this, <laughs> this this big old man that work at uh this is the big old man that work at McDonald's, right? The brother with his big old son. Every, every time, every, every, <laughs> every time, every time, the the, the women's they good because they want to flirt with you. You know what I'm saying? They, they want to smell you and all that stuff. But when it comes to that big old big, big old guy, he he always frustrated. You, you know what I'm saying? You don't ask for two two Big Macs. He done he done ate them. So he ain't got no more. <laughs> What you what you what what you mean you ain't got no more? What you you gon' you, <laughs> you gon' you gonna get back there. You gon' you gonna get back there, you gonna bring him here. Talking about he ain't got no more. Come on, come on, big man. Come on, big man. You gonna stop in these apple pies. Now they got something called them holiday pies. Since the holiday pies is nasty. <laughs> Say, I don't, let me tell you something. I don't care how much food that you eat. You can eat home food all you want. <laughs> you still going to want some McDonald's every now and again. Or you're going to want something that's on the side. Whether your jam is Starbucks, whether your jam is Chick-fil-A, whether your jam is Papa, whether your jam is Burger King, whether your jam is uh, Wendy's. You're going you gonna to want something all the way. But them holiday pies is nasty. <laughs> Them, them holiday pies is nasty. Them holiday pies is nasty. Huh? Uh, um, <laughs> uh, them holiday pies is nasty. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right? You, you try to eat them holiday pies. You up there. You just... Duck lips. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Them holiday pies is not the business. Please don't order no holiday pies. Whatever you do, don't get no holiday pies because you ain't gonna have the holiday spirit after you taking them holiday pies. Them holiday pies is not the business. All right, so don't mess with it. Don't fool with it. Just leave it alone. They lying to us. They trying to trick us. They trying to fight us. Shoot. Shoot. And I'm telling you that right now. Now, now saints, I'm going to say this like this. And some of y'all need to understand this. All people are beautiful. All women are beautiful. There are some women that, that the Lord get pleasure in you being the weight that you are. You done tried to lose weight, do all type of stuff, and the Lord said, not so. 
I want I want you big and juicy. The other woman, uh, uh, there's some of you all. You, you try to gain weight. The Lord said, that, let it be let it be as is. Lord, like you like that. The Lord, like you look like like you look like you about to run from the cops. <laughs> you in shape from the run from the cops. Blessed be God. You the athleticism, athleticism is it? The athleticism. <laughs> the athleticism. <laughs> Blessed be God. Cop coming, you done, you done. The cop up there trying to chase you. Dog on it. The cop can't even. Say, it's these cops out of shape. So I ain't even worried about cops chasing me because I just burn them. They're going to have to shoot me because. <laughs> but I will still dodge the shots. <laughs> it says there's ways that you could just dodge the shot because when you're dealing with that pistol right there, you got to see it correctly. All you just shake them up. You shake them up. You look like you're about to go right. Then you hop over to the left. Pow, pow. You just bop, 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 and you, you good. Shoot, man. You good, man. You good. You good, man. You shoot. Shoot. Saints, I've had the cops pull a gun at me before, man. That was shocking. I've had cops pull a gun at me before. I think it was only one time in my life. That was shocking, though. Because you, when, a, when a cop pulled a gun at you, you don't know if they really going to shoot it. Because they shoot. I've had a cop pull a gun at me, and I was like, I was like, this nigga about to kill me. I'm about to die right. Come on, come on, come on with it, player. Pull him up. <laughs> West Said. West Said. Throw him up, throw him up, throw him up. If, I, if, 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 if you if you going to kill me, you're going to kill me correct. <laughs> I'll pick them deuces up. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm <laughs> You gonna look at his <laughs> You be at the funeral, blessed be God. You be at the <laughs> You be at the funeral. <laughs> they have their kissing they kiss. You at the funeral, they have their kissing his face. <laughs> There's always that one rude person. That want to up there investigate the body. So I said, well, well, let's go look at his wrist right here. No, 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 you can't touch him. No, why can't touch him? I want to look at his wrist. I want to see what they put on. They, why can't touch him? I want to see if they got if he got his wristwatch like we told him. They put up, they put up his hands. He put up like. Your makeup artist is, you know why? Because your make <laughs> your makeup artist might be working for dead people. Cause there's makeup artists that you don't know what's going on. <laughs> it does something, you know. I want to do your makeup. <laughs> you know, I want to do your makeup for your play. I want to do your makeup for you. You know, I got the best makeup tips. <laughs> You know, I got the best makeup tips, you know what I'm saying? I, I know how to beat your face. I know how to do all that. You kind of find out, like, who have you beat face? <laughs> Thompson, you know, Lil Eldra. <laughs> you know, you know, Lil Eldra, you know, <laughs> you know, Lil Eldra, he died. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, Lil Eldred, stop making me laugh, y'all. You know, Lil Eldred, you know, he died. <laughs> you know, Lil Eldred, he died. You know what I'm saying? They was at the wash and dry. <laughs> stop, stop making me laugh. <laughs> well, you know, Lil Eldred, he died. We was at the wash and dry. You know, he tried to drink a little Clorox bleach. <laughs> His mama tried to tell him no. She had turned around. She told her she should want some hot Cheetos. She went go deal with the little tin cans. She got her little hot Cheetos. He went go swallow all the Clorox bleach. By the time they had got back, he was inside of the clothes. <laughs> He 
he was inside of the clothes and they he was going around. <laughs> By the time they had pulled him out, he was unconscious. He was between the jeans and there was a thong on his head. <laughs> she, she thought that he was playing because he always would put the thongs on on his forehead in the house. But when he came out, <laughs> she didn't take him serious because she thought that he was doing a prank. By the time he got to the hospital, he was pronounced dead. I beat his face. I put his makeup on him, made sure that he was nice, did all that. You know, I did some other work. <laughs> you come to find out that your makeup artist only been doing makeup on dead folks. You got to ask questions. You got to find out, well, 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 who did you do it on? Who, 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 who? Look at this here. Proverbs chapter 14, look what it says right here. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 13 says, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful and the end of, of, of that mirth is heaviness. But let's go to verse 14, rather. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Now, saints, this is very important here. Um, the backslide in heart means that you never commit to submission. You remember I was talking about how submission protects your surrender. So when they say the backslide in heart, that means that there's a satanic altar that says that you will never finish a divine assignment for King Jesus in your time on earth. <clears throat> so you got to be very careful of that <clears throat> because the backslide in heart shall be filled with his own ways. What that means is that you'll have things that won't won't be overcome by you. Like even though the blood and the power of the Holy Spirit and the angels want to take you to the next level, those things will hold you back. And, and, and it shouldn't. You see what I'm saying? Glory to God. So it said the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. That means that you'll be given to be a slave to Pharaoh. And you don't want that. The spirit of the Lord said something to me that was shocking. He said the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was Pharaoh. <laughs> that tree. He told me it was that tree. Remember the spirit of the Lord said the other day that Moses was the cherubim? That Moses was the cherubim? The Lord told me that the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was Pharaoh. That's why all of the, the kings that brought bondage to the people, their name was Pharaoh. You notice that, right? Isn't that powerful stuff there? That's glorious, right? The Lord told me that uh, um, before I got on here that that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was Pharaoh. And as you can see, you see how the Lord be talking to me about numerous things. And then he talked to me about that. Um, he told me that uh, uh, the, 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 the judges, like the, the Senate, he said that I'm pitting people there so that my will could be done in the land of America because I'm not finished with America and I'm not throwing America away and I'm not dealing with all those those accusations against America. America is the apple of my eye and I come to protect America and I come to deliver America. And, and saints, you, you got to understand. <sighs> America shall stand as the superpower for the next 12 plus years. Uh, well, let me say this, 12 years rather, not 12 plus, 12 years. America shall stand as the superpower. China will not take over. You see what I'm saying? I'm just giving you a calendar here. They will not take over. America will stand as the superpower for the next 12 years. So understand that. Um, and also you, you, you need not to be afraid. Once again, those vaccines are not the uh, mark of the beast. I'm just giving you the word of the Lord. The vaccines are not the mark of the beast, but I still advise you don't, to, don't take it because I don't use injections. I don't use those type of things. Um, I don't use those type of things. Uh, but Nevertheless, it's not the mark of the beast. So that's good news. You see what I'm saying? And this is not the time of the Antichrist. You hear me? Mark my words. Mark my words, what I'm telling you. This is not the time of the Antichrist. This is the time of the Lord. 
Always remember this. We are in 2021 before everybody else. So everybody is in another time frame, but we in 2001. So, so just understand that. I'm giving you a report from heaven. We are not in the time of the Antichrist. This is not tribulation for you. And also, this is not, um, this is not, uh, this is not the mark of the beast coming forth. And China is not taking over America. You, you hear that? So be of good cheer. The spirit of the Lord told me to uh, uh, those things. So uh, China is not overtaking America. America is not becoming a communism and all those different type of things. Nor is they being invaded and, and becoming like, you know, Cuba and all those different type of places. It's not becoming like that. America will stand strong. And America will be in superpower for the next 12 years. And um, um, that's just how it go. That's just how it go. That's just how it go. Uh, let's go here. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 14. <clears throat> Verse 14. The backslider and heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Why will a good man be satisfied from himself? Because he is a sower. Remember, it just said right here that a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children, children. Sowing unlocks that inheritance. Sowing makes long money possible. Because God is going to give you abundance with whatever you give to him. He's multiplying what you give to him. So saints, the seed is really you planting the heavens on generations that could be after you because <clears throat> the, the Lord coming back soon as well as, as far as uh, to close out some of these uh, different things. But I know for the next 12 years that um, now don't be stupid and say, oh, well, he's saying 12 years. So that mean that, hey, you know, I good. I do my thing. And then boop, boop. let me tell you something. You will die in your sin, baby with this level of knowledge that I'm giving to you. Now, I'm not saying that you, if you sin against God, that you'll die because you listen to my broadcast. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that because, because, um, some of you are growing, you're growing, you know, and stuff like that. And, and, and the Lord, he, he love you. You got to get that correct. But what I'm saying to you is that you don't know how long you going to live. Even though you look at the time calendar of the world, and you say, well, okay, 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 12, 12. No, 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 no. You don't know your duration of life. That's why even it said in the Bible, I think it was Moses said in Psalms, teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days. Teach us. Teach us to number our days. Teach us. You know what that really means? Teach us not to casualize time and think that we have forever. Isn't that powerful? That's a scripture in the Bible. What it's saying, teach us not to casualize time and act like we have forever on earth. Teach us how to be respectful that we may not be here in our year. We may not be here in five months, but that's why I'm going to give all of myself today. You see what I'm saying? So... So keep that in mind as well. Now, saints, the seed is going to bring you into a financial move of God that you've never seen before. When you name your seed, you are prophesying events that angels will bring to you. Sowing is an anointing that brings people into your life that are uh, divinely sent to bless you. Sowing is an anointing that brings people into your life that are divinely sent to bless you. When you are a seed sower, the seed will judge you because even when you sow in seed, the seed will reveal to you whether your heart is really right. When you're sowing, if you are a liar, while, while you're sowing, the lion going to come forth. Uh, and, and while you're sowing, if you are 
a person of, uh, of, of, of disloyalty, your disloyalty is going to come forth. If you saw it, if you're a person of disrespect, your disrespect going to come forth. The seed is an x-ray on your own person. Hallelujah. The seed will start showing you things about you that you didn't know was in you. Because it's an x-ray. It's an x-ray. It's an examination. Because the seed is really the fear of God. So when I sow seed, I'm operating in an ability that's the fear of God. So if when I'm sowing seed, if I really don't fear God, it's going to be exposed in my behavior that I'm lying. That I don't really fear God. You see what I'm saying? When I start sowing seed, if I really don't fear God, I'm going to start seeing it in my behavior. So I'm going to see that I really don't fear God. Because a seed is an x-ray. It's going to start talking to you about what in you is corrupt, is messy, is not correct. You see what I'm saying? And it's also going to show you your strong points. It's going to show you divine qualities that, that you just need to operate more, you, you know, divine weapons that you need to use more, and things that you need to put into action more so. But when you sow in seed, it's going to expose to you who you are. So if you are Martha, when you sow, Martha going to come forth. You're going to see the Martha in you. Mar Martha, Martha was a, she was a spiritual hope. She was a religious hope. What I mean, I don't mean she ducks in no man. What I mean that she had many teachers. Uh, Martha was was all over the place. If she had a Facebook page, she she would be listening to everybody. She'll be on everybody page. Um, Saints, don't you hate when people try to get you to like their page? <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, on Facebook, people be trying to get you to like their page, dog on it. Saints, I I was shocked. I looked at my thing. I had about a hundred. I had over hundreds of people that were trying to get me to like that stuff, and I, I ain't even. But Martha was going to be a woman like that. She was all over the place. If, 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 if five preachers was coming with a conference, she was going to be at every conference. That was Martha. So, 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 if 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 you start sowing seed in you and Martha, that's what's going to come forth. Spiritually, the seed is for you to look inside of yourself. To see what is inside of me, what has been seeded in me. Wow. Saints, I'm teaching something I never taught before. When you're sowing the seed, it is going to expose every seed that's inside of you. Even bloodline seed. Even seed that come from people that 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 you probably used to hang with in, in times past. Every seed is going to be exposed. That's the power of the seed being sown. So every time you sow a seed, you are actually receiving the mirror image of who you are. You're receiving the, the, the things that has been holding you back from operating like God is going to be magnified so that you can cut it loose officially. So when you are seed sower, the spirit on purpose is going to magnify all of the Goliaths that been hiding inside of you. The spirit of Goliath is the spirit that stops you from entering into the promised land. The spirit of Goliath is the spirit that keeps you from fulfilling a divine mission, fulfilling your divine inheritance and in how you're really supposed to be living. Um, so, so the seed will reveal to you the Goliaths, the seed will kill Goliath and the seed will keep Goliath from ever resurrecting. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter, um, Proverbs chapter, uh, 14 verse 14. Again, it says a good man shall be satisfied from himself. That means that he's doing the laws of God and is birthing his satisfaction. Look what it said. It didn't say that he's going to be satisfied from God. It said that he shall be satisfied from himself because himself has learned how to sow. Himself has learned how to praise. Himself has learned how to forgive. 
himself. Now, saints, I want to also deal with forgiveness for about five seconds. You got to forgive people because you're going to meet a lot of stupid people on this money coming path. Boy, have I met a lot of stupid people. And, and, and people that you try to help. You try to help them. And, and they're just stupid. Uh, you're trying to give them the light. You're trying to give them wisdom. You're trying to help them out of their bondage. Boy, boy, have I met a lot of stupid people in my life. Now think about it. Jesus, I have met a lot of people that it's like you're trying to labor to get them out of hell. And he's like, no hell, get me, get me. And, and, and then hell turned them against you. Now they fighting you. You fighting for them to come out, for them to be saved. For them to be set free. And they done turn around and fight at you. And all the hell using them to fight you. And you're like, wow. I've met a lot of stupid people in my day. But you got to forgive people. And let them go on about their jolly business. There's certain people sometimes on my line. I block them. Because I'm not trying to save them. When I see that they when I see that they stupid. It's like, boom. Just go on about your business. We're not, we not even going to argue. We not, we not, I'm not even going to try to win you. I'm not going to try to intercede for you. Just go on about your business. I'm not trying to save you. Go to hell. You see what I'm saying? Because uh, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. <laughs> so when, when, when we, I'm sent to the remnant. So when we deal with forgiveness, you're going to have to forgive a lot of stupid people on this money coming path. Because the more wiser you get, the more foolish you're going to see people are. And you're going to have to let that be. Don't let them bother you. Don't let them stress you out. Don't let them hurt you. Don't let them tear you down. Forgive them. And sometimes you got to talk to yourself and say, let the nigga go. Bye. Bye. Le bosan de le bosa. You got you to you you talk to yourself sometimes. And you got to talk yourself into forgiveness. Let people go. Let people go. Um, you might even start out with three people, four people, five people with you. And then it's like you see two of them start acting weird. Three of them start acting weird. Two of them start, one of them start acting weird. Let them go, baby. Let them go. Don't, don't, don't let them bother you. Let them go. You're going to have to let them go. Let them go. Let them, let them go. Saints, this whole gospel stuff, you can't make nobody want Jesus. Now, I found that out a long time ago. I enjoy the presence of God. I enjoy living uh, righteous. I enjoy living in the spirit. But I realize if people don't like it, man, come on, just serve Satan. Do it, baby. Do it, baby. Because when you inhale, I'm going to be talking some stuff to you. I'm going to say, hey, Kool-Aid, you want some water? Guess what? I hope you up there die. I hope you die down there. Because when I was trying to give you water, you was up there enjoying. You was enjoying deception. Enjoy your deception. Now, you all good. We ain't got no Fiji for you. No, it's all good. Enjoy yourself, baby. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy enjoy it. Enjoy it. No, no, we ain't got nothing for you. We ain't got nothing for you, boy, baby. We ain't got nothing for you. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. That means that the Lord is going to start teaching you things that is going to birth your satisfaction. And you're going to have to walk in it. He's going to start teaching you stuff that you are going to be the activator of your own satisfaction. He going to show you things that are going to be dominion for you so that you can activate your own prosperity, your own wealth. Now, since there are some qualities that you need when you're walking in wealth. And the qualities is this. You're going to have to be somebody that loves to um, you're going to have to be someone that loves to create an atmosphere of pleasure. You're going to have to love love that. And saints, pleasure is not just sex. You understand, right? Pleasure is not sex. Pleasure means that, that blessed be God, say you living in a, 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 you living in a place with somebody. Don't turn your daggone music up loud, 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 loud. And they letting you stay there. Turn, turn it down. What's wrong with you? You got to have manners. Some of you all need to learn how to keep favor where you are. You're talking about, oh, they're not saved. Well, 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 well they're not saved. Turn your music down. You see what I'm saying? 
Turn the stuff down. Don't do stuff that ain't got no manners and they expect God to back you. You got to have kingdom manners. Broadcast number two. Check me on here and then checkmate and then we done. Watch this.